Hey there. Today, we are going to be talking about a recent research article about turbulence. You're probably familiar with turbulence from when you go fly on an airplane and it's a little bit bumpy, but there's a lot more about turbulence that you probably don't know. So let's do a quick introduction. Now, turbulence is basically the movement of different air masses against each other, and it causes things that are in the air to move around, like an airplane. It can be caused by two different things. One, it could be caused by air speed. So if you have air masses that are moving at different speeds and they run into each other, you're going to get turbulence. The second thing is air direction. So if you're moving in different directions, you could get those air masses running into each other and that by itself would cause turbulence. Now changes in air temperature can modify or change air speed or direction. Now turbulence is really dangerous or um, should be really important to us, let's say, because it can do a lot of damage to airplanes. In fact, it can do about $200 million worth of damage per year, which is a lot of money. Also, it has the potential to cause injury. Don't worry, it's not very common that it causes injuries, but it could happen, so it's something that we need to be aware of. Now, a lot of times turbulence can happen when your plane maybe flies over a mountain range or if it has to go around a storm. And that's because there's lots of movement in the air happening because of those physical features. But there is also a type of turbulence that you're probably not familiar with, which is called clear air turbulence. And this is turbulence that happens when you don't have any kind of physical thing that is causing the turbulence. You're just in clear air. Now, one of the things that can cause changes in turbulence is changes in weather or weather patterns kind of over a long term. And one of the things that scientists are interested in is how things like climate change can affect turbulence. Now, just a quick review of climate change. It is caused by the burning of fossil fuels that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, so things like carbon dioxide. And when the sun shines and goes through the atmosphere, all of that heat energy is transferred to these greenhouse gas molecules, and that causes an increase in temperature. Now, remember, like I said before, an increase in temperature or a change in temperature can cause differences in airspeed and air directions. This is why we're worried about climate change causing differences in turbulence. So the question here is, does climate change cause changes in clear air turbulence? So what the researchers did, let's talk a little bit about the methods of what they did. They looked at a huge database of satellite information from 1979 to 2020. And that database was a global database. So they had data from all different points all over the globe for the whole entire 42 year uh, cycle. And this data was all about air temperature, air speed, and air direction. So what they did with that information is they then calculated 21 different components or um, parameters that are related to turbulence. Then they looked at the probability that we have an increase in turbulence based on those parameters. So they were looking at probabilities. I did not spell that correctly. Probabilities. There we go. Okay. So what did they actually find? Now here's the fun part. I get to draw a little map for you to show you globally what they found. So bear with me here for a minute. Um, here's our world map. Here is the equator. North Pole is at 90 degrees north, South Pole is at 90 degrees south, and here's South America, Alaska, Florida, Gulf of Mexico, okay, not too bad, 
and then we have Africa over here, and then Europe, we've got the Mediterranean, and then we've got England there somewhere, Russia, down here we've got uh, India coming up here, we've got Japan, we've got Australia down here. Okay, not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. <laughs> so they found a couple of really important things. So first off, what they found was that there was increased turbulence at what we call the mid-latitudes. And mid-latitudes are anywhere between 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So kind of in this range right here. So we have an increase in turbulence there, an increase in the probability that you would encounter turbulence. The second thing is that they found the northern hemisphere, so anything above the equator in the north, was two times more likely to have turbulence during this time than the southern hemisphere. So lots going on in the northern hemisphere. The third thing they found was that the greatest increases were in the North Atlantic and over the United States. So here and here. They also found that in the autumn and winter, there was a lot more turbulence than the spring and summer, all right? So what does this all mean? Let's have a little discussion here. Now, the first thing to remind you of is that turbulence causes lots of damage to airplanes, and it also has the potential to injure people. So based on this map that we have, one thing that is really important is that there is increased turbulence in areas that have the most flights. Okay, so between Europe and the United States, over the United States in the Northern Hemisphere, we have the most flights. So our increase in turbulence is likely to cause a lot of damage or injuries because it's in an area where a lot of people actually fly. So the next thing is that this research group has also been making some forecasts or predictions about what might happen to turbulence in 2050 to 2080. And combined with this data from this research paper, they looked at those predictions, which agreed that turbulence was gonna go up and think that this increase might already be starting to happen. Now, this is really important, again, because of the potential for damage and the potential for people to get injured. And so what we really need to do, I didn't want purple there, let's do green again. To do, we have a to-do list. <laughs> One is that the data that we use needs to be the most accurate. We need to have as much data as possible. And we need to keep making these predictions. Now, what does this mean for you? Oops. Now, you should not be afraid to fly. I'm just gonna put that out there. You should not be afraid to fly. Injury chances are very low, even with an increased amount of turbulence. But there are a couple of things, and I'm gonna write these in pink because that is kind of a jarring color, so you'll remember them. Um, things that you can do to stay safe on airplanes. The first one is wear your seatbelt. Even when that seatbelt sign isn't on, because clear air turbulence is hard to predict where it's gonna happen, keeping your seatbelt on means that if you do encounter clear air turbulence, you're gonna be safe in your seat. The second thing is that you need to keep things stowed away. That could mean that it's under your seat or it could mean that it's in your bag in an overhead bin. As long as it's not kind of out in the cabin unless you're using it, it won't fly around during turbulence and potentially hurt someone. And the third thing that will keep you safe is to 
listen to the announcements. The captains and the flight attendants are gonna tell you what to do. So as long as you follow their, their instructions, you're gonna be safe and you are going to have a happy flight. Thanks for listening. Hope you learned some stuff.